Good morning. It's time for church. Are you ready? Are you ready for church? Like this broadcast. Share this broadcast. Get ready to raise your hands and praise. Do your dance. Clap your hands. It's time for church. You're not here by mistake. You're supposed to be here this morning. You're supposed to have others with you. Like, share. Bishop George Bloomer is on the way. And get ready because he has a word for you. God bless you. Thank you for joining us. Hallelujah. It's Sunday, and we're going into a word of prayer. Hallelujah. If you bow your heads, hallelujah, and look into the hills from which cometh our help, Lord. We're asking the Holy Spirit, hallelujah, to fill this atmosphere here. We're asking the Holy Spirit to enter in, hallelujah. We're asking for angelic visitations to meet us this night. We're asking for angelic visitations that the angels of the Lord will meet us in this place, that the angels of the Lord will encamp around us, God. The angels of protection, the angels of healing, the angels of prosperity, the angels of the Lord, God, to fall upon your people, God. Our angels is encamping around us now. Angels of protection now. Our angels of protection. Our angels of protection, God. We're asking you to protect us from this death angel that's moving across the, across the land now. God, we're thanking you now for our angels of protection, God. Angels protect our bishop, God, and his family now. Every clerk, pastor, God. Every sanctuary, God, in the name of Jesus, God. Every person connected to this ministry, we're thanking you for our angels. And they're encamping about us now. They're encamping about your home. Your angels is at your doorposts and it's covering your doorposts now. In Jesus' name. Good morning, Bethel. This Sunday morning scripture reading is entitled, God's Wonderful Works. We will be reading from Genesis 1, 1 through 5, 26 and 27, Psalm 104, 13 through 15 and 24, Isaiah 40 and 18 and 22, Psalm 103, 22. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, and the earth was without form and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, let there be light, and let there was light. And God saw the light, that it was good, and God divided the light from the darkness. And God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And the evening and the morning were the first day. And God said, let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion and over all the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. He watered the hills from his chambers. The earth is satisfied with the fruits of thy works. He causes the grass to grow for the cattle and herb for the service of man, that they may bring forth food out of the earth and bread which strengthens man's heart. O oh Lord, how manifold are thy works. In wisdom hast thou made them all. The earth is full of thy riches. To whom then will ye liken God? Or what likeness will ye compare unto him? It is he that sitteth upon the circle of the earth, and the inhabitants thereof are as grasshoppers that stretcheth out the heavens as a curtain and spreadeth them out as a tent to dwell in. Bless the Lord, all his works, in all places of his dominion. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. is gone. The rain is over and done with. The flowers appear on the earth. The time of the singing of the birds have come, and the voice of the turtle can be heard in the land. Don't let it. Don't let it. Don't let it. Your season. Don't let it. Don't let it. Don't let it pass you by. Don't let it. 
Don't let it. Your season. Don't let it pass you by. God bless you and welcome to Bethel Family Worship Center live stream. It's Sunday morning and it's time for you to get up and get ready. We are embarking upon the closing of this year and it's celebratorial time, a time to celebrate. Now, in the midst of all that we're talking about, this is still important. And for those of you that think it's not, think again. Keep a mask, practice social distancing, and when you don't have to be in crowds, get away from crowds. Brand new variants is coming down, 33 separate issues are going on in the nation at one time. But God promised that if we stayed under the blood, he would protect us. Share, like, like, share, turn your living room into a sanctuary, call somebody that you know, it's time to have a little bit of church on this morning. I'm excited about the word that's about to go forth this morning in the name of Jesus. Let the glory of our King be within us. Let the glory of the Lord, let the glory of the Lord, let it rise. Shine for the light has come 
and the glory of the Lord has risen upon thee, though darkness shall cover the earth, woo, even gross darkness is people, but you shall rise up out of the dust, you shall rise up out of the pain, you shall rise up out of the death, you shall rise up out of the brokenness, you shall rise up, 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 you shall rise up.
leading up to this service. And I just thank God for the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit that's in this room right now. The past few days, I've, I've been uh, uh, mourning and uh, celebrating the death and the homegoing service of one of my uh, friends in the kingdom. And that's uh, Marcus Lamb, the president of Daystar Network. I can't even wrap my mind around how he could be gone at 30, at, at, at 64 years old. I can't, I can't wrap my mind around that. In fact, when I spoke to him uh, a few weeks ago, he was doing fine, and then COVID set in. And uh, then a few days after that, like on, I think it was like, I don't know, Friday, so he was up walking around, and then the next morning, that was like eight hours later, he was dead. This thing ain't nothing to play with. This, this, this thing isn't anything to play with. And when I was going through my challenges at the Word Network, Marcus called, first he sent me a text. He said, I heard, I saw things online. You have a home here at Daystar. That, 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 that blew, that blew me away. Come on to the network and work along with us. Let people see that you're covered. This is not the 20s, 30s, 40s, and 50s, and 60s where privilege can say whatever they want to say and do whatever they want to do. I don't see your color, I see your persons. You're gifted. And that set we just saw, he built that set for the message for that service that night. When the service was over, we talked for about two hours after the service was over. That thing bothered me. This new variants that's out ain't playing taking people out I want to pray for you I'm not trying to shift your faith or mess with your position with God God will protect you but you got to make sure it's God all the work this man of God did the building of uh, helping me dig wells and Helping us get our own network station and helping with my defense. All the stuff he did, not just for me, but for so many others. At this time, people don't know how to mourn you properly. They just start going at you. I want the family to know that I love you very, very much. And so a spirit for a few moments of grief fell on me and uh, it wasn't good. And uh, so I decided that I was going to go and send him a text, even though I know he's gone, but just for closure for myself. Just send him a text and say what I want to say in the text. That's how my closure was going to be. And I remember that happened when my mother passed away. And three months went by, I couldn't feel anything. There was so much going on with the family, so I couldn't feel anything. And then one morning I woke up. And I had a question in my mind that my mother, would, I would always talk to her about. And I reached over and grabbed the phone and dialed her number, forgetting that she's already, we buried her, she's gone. But that's what grief does. Grief will, will snatch you and hold you in limbo. And I dialed it, and when I heard her voice, I realized that she was gone. I broke down and every well in me, and then I got my release. I'm praying for the Daystar family. I know you're gonna do well. I know he's prepared you uh, for this in his own way. If you start thinking, sitting back and thinking a little bit, you'll, you'll, you'll see what has happened. And when I went to his number, to text his number, there was a message there from Rachel and Joni. They knew that I would come to that place. They shared something with me. I shared it back with them, and it's lifted. What is 2022 going to be like? Only God knows. God knows in heaven we got to get past this gloom and stuff. We got to. We got to. 
I don't want anybody's faith to be attacked. And so on the top of the thing is anti-vaccine preacher dies of COVID. I don't want anybody's faith to be attacked. I don't want anybody's faith to be attacked. Because if God is speaking to you like that, you follow God. Because if he's telling you to do that and you don't follow him, and you go do something, you're going to die. Obey God. But make sure that it is God. So Bethel Family Worship Center, G.G. Bloomers Ministries, and uh, um, all of the ministries that we support, we thank you. We stand in agreement with you. I'll see you uh, on tomorrow at the homegoing service. Bless you so much in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Well, let's do a little church to uh, shift the atmosphere again in the name of Jesus. The Lord is blessing me right now. would help you here because I know when I take a Daniel's text you think I'm going into deep spiritual warfare and um, most times I am but not these two times I sense and I believe that we have just embarked upon the largest wealth transfer that the kingdom has ever heard of or experienced in its existence. That's what I believe. Just a few of us in here, but we're interceding for you. Bojangles, McDonald's, those places are now paying between $15 and $19 an hour. What? Yes. And $27 an hour in California. I don't know what the New York's numbers are. Minimum wage is $7.25 or something like that. Listen to me. Almost 30 some odd percent of the marketplace is unfilled. Everybody's hiring, but they can't find people to take the jobs. The harvest is plentiful, but the labors are few. They're coming for your words. Angels are all around us. And Bethel, this morning, I want to take you into sort of like a Bible st uh, uh, study, Bible teaching, etc. on this morning for you. 
because I think that there's a lot of questions that we have about angels and demons that are not answered. And so I want to spend a little bit of time there for you, to help you. I want to tell you that I'm not an interpreter of dreams, so I don't have the gift of, of interpreting dream interpretation. I don't have it. At best, I'm telling you what's coming off the top of my head. I'm not one of those prophets that can tell you age, number, um, uh, zip code number, uh, address. I don't, I don't have that. And yet I know some that can. Listen, I was with a young, a, a young prophet uh, and with him and his dad. And uh, he said the, the, the prophet is 17 years old. The prophet is 17 years old. We're in Africa. And... Uh, he said, Bishop, you don't believe that my son has this gift. I said, yeah, you got it, he got it. It's, 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 a, it's a house gift, it's, it's passed down. He said, no, 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 my son really has this gift. He said, pick anybody in this restaurant right now, point out whoever you want in the restaurant right now, and my son is gonna go to them and tell them their name, their address, da, 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 da. Any one of them in the restaurant. Hmm? I pointed out someone. He went over to the person. I'm standing there. Gives the person's name, talks to the person. Tell the person they had a pink uh, uh, um, a stick up, post up in there, what they wrote on the post up. Person just broke down, cried, and what you go? I said, well, do him, do it. Then people were coming over to us and saying, do me. He was that gifted, that gifted. Then he told his son, he said, sit down, boy. Bishop, what I want you to do, I want you to get him excited about the word of God. He says he's gifted, but he doesn't know the Bible. Angels are coming for your word. That was a prayer that he prayed. And I'm the angel that God released. And your angel you are angels that God is releasing. But the first thing you got to do, he's got to set you up. So let's do the setup this morning in the name of Jesus. Uh, Daniel chapter number 10, verses 1. Daniel chapter number 10, verses 1 through 14. And it reads like, let me see, did I, is that my right one? Let me... Let me see, Daniel's, I'm sorry, Daniel's chapter number five. Well, you want to mess up this, this morning, George Bloomer, don't you? Daniel's chapter number five. Uh, let me get this thing together. Daniel's chapter number five, verses one through eight is going to be our start off. Father, bless us this morning in the name of Jesus as we get people in position to be blessed in Jesus' name, amen and amen. All right, and it reads like this. Belshazzar the king made a great feast to a thousand of his lords and drank wine before the thousand. Belshazzar, while he tasted the wine, commanded to bring the golden and silver vessels which his father, Nebuchadnezzar, had taken out of the temple which was in Jerusalem, that the king and his princes, his wives, and his concubines might drink therein. Then they brought the golden vessels that were taken out of the temple of the house of God, which was at Jerusalem, and the king and his princes, his wives, and his concubines drank in them. Mm. They drank wine and praised the gods of what gold. What kind of party is that? You know, anytime you have a party with wives and concubines, there's going to be some stirring up. My God try to quarantine in that that is an amazing wives and concubines watch this here they drank wine and praised the gods of gold and of silver of brass of iron of wood and of stone in the same hour came forth fingers of a man's hand and wrote over against the candlestick upon the plaster of the wall of the king's palace mm. and the king saw the part of the hand that wrote 
Then the king's countenance was changed, and his thoughts troubled him, so that the joints of his loins were loosed, and his knees smote one so against that another. So the joints of his loins was loose, and his knees knocked together. Imagine, this thing frightened him so much that he lost his bowels. We, we see this happening a lot in the book of Daniel, when angels show up. People say, the Lord spoke to me, and God tell me this, and God tell me that. We hear all that come from people, but when we read in the scripture, being visited by God ain't no easy task. Watch this here. The king cried aloud to bring in the astrologers, the Chaldeans, and the soothsayers. And the king spake and said to the wise men of Babylon, Whosoever shall read this writing and show me the interpretation thereof shall be clothed with scarlet and have a chain of gold about his neck and shall be the third ruler in the kingdom. Then came in all the king's wise men, but they could not read the writing nor make known to the king the interpretation thereof. Wow. Uh, jump down to verse number 13. Verse number 13. Then was Daniel brought in before the king, and the king spake, and said unto Daniel, Art thou that Daniel, which art of the children of the captivity of Judah, whom the king my father brought out of Jewry? I have even heard of thee, that the spirit of the gods is in thee, and that light and understanding and excellent wisdom is found in thee. My God. Jump down to verse number 24. It says this. Then was the part of the hand sent from him, and this writing was written. And this is the writing that was written. Mini, mini, tekel, eupharsin. This is the interpretation of the thing. Mini, God have numbered thy kingdom and finished it. Tekel. Thou art weighed in the balances and art found wanting. Okay. So there you have, that's it. That's the matter of the whole story. Daniel is carried away out of Judah. Uh, Nebuchadnezzar uh, uh, um, goes into the temple, takes out the holy articles, takes out the communion cups, takes out the uh, spiritual vessels that is used, the, the candlesticks, and brings it into the uh, uh, temple of his false gods and place their wealth, their gold, into their treasury. Takes the young men, bring the young men out of their uh, uh, experience, bring them into uh, 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 Babylon, and begin now to teach them the ways of the Chaldeans. Nebuchadnezzar dies. His son takes over the kingdom. When his son takes over the kingdom, his son is like the little boy, gifted with no knowledge. He forgot what his father went through. He forgot that his father was driven out into the woods and turned into a bird man, eating his own dung, nails as long as claws, hair like feathers, lost his mind until Daniel called him back to his right place. This joker goes into the house of their gods and brings out the holy vessels and pours wine in it and begins to drink and insults God. God can't take any more of this. So a finger without a hand, a hand without an arm or wrist, an elbow, starts writing against the plaster of the wall as plaster cracks and falls down words that no one in the room understands but everyone in the room actually sees it. They don't understand it, but they see it. This is God setting this angel up. I'm telling you, your setups are happening all around you, but you just gotta make sure that you're not mad and angry and vengeful. What are you doing? Understand, good manners bring you before great people. Gifts bring you before great people. Get your manners, your character in order. Greatness is about to happen. I don't care how gifted you are. If you have a nasty attitude and a bad disposition, you're gifted, but don't nobody want to deal with you. Straighten that part out. Daniel, who is gifted, has a name in his bondage that the gods, not just God, but every god that exists, has regard and respect for him. The handwriting is on the wall. The king lost his bowels in the banquet. People are screaming, are moving all over the place. They're, 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 they're running out of the place. It's just not a good scene. What is 
wife comes and says to him, and mother-in-law comes and says, you know there's somebody in town that can help you. He says, I don't need them. Go get the magicians. Go get the sorcerers. I don't need them. The heck with them. What I need them for? I got my own. They came in the room and looked at the wall and couldn't read it. It's the first time you realize that they've been hoodwinking him for years. Nothing supernatural has been happening. And since nothing supernatural has happened, they can make up stuff. But that day they couldn't make it up. She said, do I need to call him now? Uh, the one that you say you don't need? They go get Daniel. Daniel walks in the room. And this is what the Lord says. The king says, if you can interpret my dream, I'll give you the third position in the kingdom. Now, this is a guy who is bound and he's in slavery. I'll give you the third position in the kingdom. The third position in the kingdom. There was a preacher who came to preach in Greensboro at a church some 30 years ago. Me and another preacher, Nathan, Nathaniel, Nathaniel Nathan, was at this church in Greensboro. They had invited this preacher to come preach and he walked in, Jerry Curl, shiny, his pants were shining, cowboy boots and a big belt. That guy preached that place in two. It was unbelievable. Your dad was with us. Unbelievable. Wrecked that place. But they had no towels for him to change his clothes and to draw his back. And in those days, when the preacher got finished preaching, they would always bring them orange juice. Reese used to go to the places and they give everybody the orange juice. He got to have orange juice and all he did was play the organ. He wanted his orange juice too. The devil is alive. He wanted his orange juice. He didn't give me no orange juice. He wanted his orange juice. No orange juice for the man of God. Me and Nathan, we went out and Kate Mark, K Mark was big during that time. We ran to K Mark and got some towels and got some orange juice for him, came back. Gave him the towels, he dried his back, wiped his face, drank the orange juice, asked us what our name was. Shared our name with him. I said, man, that message today was unbelievable. I turned around and I looked. I said, this is, this is, this is, this, wow. Where are you going? He said, I'm going to this other church to preach at, and then when I leave, I'm going back home. I looked at him and I said, man, you're going to do great and mighty things. Remember me when you come into your kingdom. That's all I said. That was it. Two years later, he's invited to preach at Azusa. Preaches at Azusa, his name breaks out, he goes all over the country. Get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready. This is the same guy. <laughs> Pants ain't shining no more. No more big belt. No, 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 Jerry Curl, no, 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 that's all, all that's gone now. Yeah, he's at the height of his game. We at the Raleigh, the, the, the Raleigh Civic Center that holds 6,000, they had to turn away an additional 4,000. People started gathering at one o'clock in the afternoon for a seven o'clock service at night. This man was packing the place, packing arenas everywhere. Get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready. Get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready. We at the crusade there. I'm sitting on the stage. And he preaches. They don't put him up to preach that night until 1130 in the nighttime. 1130. The people been there since 12 o'clock in the afternoon. But nobody left. They wanted to experience this angel that had hit America in ways that had never been hit before. My God. And he preached that night and asked me for my coat. Took my coat and threw my coat, my suit jacket, on the floor. People were running over, stepping on my suit jacket, throwing money in the suit jacket. I couldn't even feel the presence of God. All I could think about was my suit jacket. <laughs> That's the truth. That's the truth. I'm over there half mad. Shirley C's got to calm me down. This is all right, Bloom. What's going on? was over, uh, gave me the suit jacket, all dusty and dirty. He went home. I got a telephone call in my hotel room from Carolyn, and she says, Shirley, she's the one to talk to you right now. I said, Bishop had an emergency overnight, and he had to fly back home last night. But he left a request for you to speak in his place. 
for you to speak in this place. I stepped into that arena, 6,000 people, they waiting to hear him, had no idea that the towel and the orange juice was going to pay off in a harvest in a room, unexpected. I got up. Whew. And the minute I stood up, people started walking like herds of people leaving the place. Who the heck is that boy? They started moving. So I told the story of a mother who used to cook all the time. And uh, one day she went on vacation and she left the number to a pizzeria. And they called the pizzeria and they ate the pizza. And when all was said and done, they said the pizza was really, really good. And the other sister said, was the pizza really, really good or were we really, really hungry? So I said, I know that all of you have an appetite for Jake's. But if you're really, really hungry, I'll give you a little slice of this pizza. And I started teaching. And I noticed that the chairs started filling back up again. People started coming into the, into the arena. And I preached that day. Whew. I sold everything at my table. The next week he flew me in to Dallas to speak for them in Dallas. This was a hookup. It was a seed that was sown and a harvest that come up. How long does it take for an oak tree to grow? Quite some time. That's what happened to me. My angel showed up. And from there on in, miraculous and unbelievable doors started opening up. Opening up for me. My God opening up for me. It's an amazing thing that happened. That God will situate and have people in pockets and in place to war for you, to fight for you, you won't have to do anything. Nothing. And there I was, preaching at the potter's house. What in the world is going on? How did that happen? By recognizing, by recognizing who that guy is standing right there. And I recognize you. This is the reason why I teach. Perceive every man at his level of presentation. Don't look how the person is dressed and what he said. Don't, don't do that all the time. Every now and then, shut up and figure this thing out. This morning, Bethel, I believe that God has staged so many miracles and so many blessings for you that you have shut the doors on yourself for. There's great opportunities that are in front of you. You shut the door on yourself, and I don't want you to do that another day in your life. I'm asking God to open up avenues and doors for, for you to be in the marketplace. Someone came to me, wrote me a, 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 a letter, uh, not a letter, but a, a, a text and sent it through overseer. Uh, does Bishop Bloomer know that his daughter is, is singing at a concert? Oh, yes, Bishop Bloomer knows that his daughter is singing at a concert. She ain't singing the Holy Ghost songs. He know that too. And guess what else he knows? He know that she's a grown woman too. Y'all ain't, what we want to do? Lock her up and, 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 and spank her? What, 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 what you want me to do? Uh, please, please explain this to me. What do, you, what do you want me to do? What do you want me to do? Old George Bloomer from back in 30 years ago, I'd had a conniption. But I came in contact with angels. An angel like uh, 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 Bishop uh, Blake, uh, the pastor of West Angeles Church of God in Christ, who is the pastor of Angela Bassett and, and, and Stevie Wonder and, and Denzel Washington and, and on and on and on. And Denzel receives an uh, opportunity to do training day that's going to give him $10 million. $10 million. And he goes to his pastor and he says, but there's cussing in the script. He says, I got to cuss. I got to say bad things in the script. Bishop Blake said, do you feel like cussing? No, it's in the script. Says, that's your job? Do your job. Get the $10 million and pay your tithe. <laughs> I'm not saying that this is for money. What I'm saying is this. Denzel Washington is responsible for the revival that broke out in Hollywood. Because when he would finish during his breaks, they would do prayer meetings and Bible studies and invite people in. And when I got invited in, that was I, I didn't know what to even say to people. Because I, I know how to do church. I don't know how to do... He said, no, just... They don't want the fake stuff. The reason why, they, they want to hear your past. They want to hear your story. They're coming for your words. Let me change it. Your testimony. Your testimony. 
If you don't tell your testimony and you don't tell what happened to you and how God has delivered and set you free, then some blogger will get it and make it something bad when it was something all good. Somebody will, somebody will cause you to lose your sobriety. Yeah, you drank alcohol. Yeah, you messed up. And the Lord delivered you from it. But you didn't tell it. You know, there's always people inside the church that would get up and share, share, share. Then there was others that was too good to share. They act like they've been all right all the time. Angels, they're coming for your word. Doors of opportunity is opening up like never before. This is our season. Make a sacrifice. Watch God change your life. Open doors. Overflow. Don't let it. Don't let it pass you by. And when God gives you an opportunity, treat it right. Treat it right. The Bible says, make friends with the unjust mammoth so that when you fail, they will receive you into everlasting inhabitations. The Bible says that the children of this world are wiser in their generation than the children of light. That sinners got more sense in working in the marketplace than Christians have. I have a whole lot on this paper, so I'm going to finish this next week. I want to say to you that we are about to experience something phenomenal as we're opening back up. If you can't see that I've been redeemed and I've been washed in the blood of the lamb, then you're blind. And if the scripture is true like priests, like people, that means that my people in this house is about to experience a blessing like never before. Woo, thank you so much. Yeah, you are about to experience miraculous miracles in your life. He's opening up doors, making ways out of no way. No anger, no bitterness, no revenge. No anger, no bitterness, no revenge. I'm praying and seeking God on how I can bless people who are extremely gifted but there's something in their way. And the thing that is in their way, pastor, is them. If I can just teach them how to get out of their own way, they can be blessed. Last Sunday morning, when the musicians was playing, I almost had a rapture. I know that there are things in those guys that are unbelievable. In 2022, I'm asking God to reveal it. I'm asking God to reveal it. I no longer want to be around people that don't want anything. I no longer want to be around people. I no longer want to desire more for you than you desire for yourself. I no longer want to micromanage anything. I want to move amongst teams of individuals that you give them a job and you step back and you let them and you don't even bother them because you know they're going to get the job done. I want to see the fruit of my labor. They're coming for your word. Every word that you speak, George Bloomer, angels are assigned to it and they're coming. Terry, one of your favorite, one of your favorite slogans, I don't know if you still say it now, but one of your favorite slogans was, there's a word spoken over my life that cannot fail. <laughs> There's a word that is spoken over my life that cannot fail. Do you, do, Tim, do you think I pray for you? Huh? Let me tell you something. Let me close with this. God has to bless you. He has to bless you. He's got, got to bless you for your faithfulness in and out of situations. He's got to bless you for your loyalty. All I'm asking God to do is to get you to get out of your way. And say, Bishop, how am I in my way? 
You're in your way because you got it, but you keep on second guessing yourself. Don't second guess another time. If you mess up, so what? At least I tried it. I hit that sucker. Bing! Bang! Okay, bang ain't good, but bang was good. Go back to the bank. This year is going to be a year like that. It's going to be a year like that. It's going to be a year like that. Where men and women of God are going to walk in your shoes and those that can't walk in your shoes will walk in your footprints. Let me tell you something. You intercessors started something here that will never ever die. If, even if you left here, you created the pattern of how things are going to And guess what? People who don't pray can't even come. So don't, don't, don't ever look at the numbers and see where the numbers are. Don't, don't, don't worry about it. The, 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 the channels of prayer is blocking individuals who are cynical from even being in the circle. All the seed that you have in the ground is about to come up. So decree it and declare it. The service, Jeff, that you give to me, the service, Isaiah, that you give to me, is going to be rewarded gratefully. The service that you give to me, Victor, you ain't getting nothing. But all you, the service, the service, the team, the staff that worked with us as we're getting ready to move back into place, there's going to be Rewards, not just coming from angels, but coming from me personally. That's how God works. You can't be in a club where you deal with people who just take, 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 and don't give. So you're going to see a change, a shift in the whole structure. Thank God. Thank God. Thank God that your angel is coming for your word. And every seed that you have in the ground is about to come up. I speak it now over your life. Longevity, long life, in Jesus' name, amen and amen. Every time I hear it, it does something to me. I've heard it, I've heard it a thousand times. I heard it so much. And uh, it blesses me because I know it's closing something to open up something. Something just opened up for you. Whoo! <laughs> questions that were brought in uh, this week. We're just going to flash them across the screen. We're going to have a talk about this next week. Next one. Next one. Next one. Next one. Uh -huh. Next one. Ain't no next. There you go. All right. So we're, that's, we're, we're going to talk about that. The Holy Spirit did not allow us to move into that vein because we're getting ready to come back in the house. December the 31st will be our first corporate service together in this building in two, two years. Uh, December the 1st will be uh, uh, Reset Prayer, uh, Reset Start Praying Conference. Uh, December, uh, January the 2nd will be uh, Sunday morning service, Sunday night. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. This is going to be really... It's going to be really, really nice. Really, really nice. Okay? 
um, live recording here at Bethel Family Worship Center on, is that the fourth? That's the fourth, right? Is it the fourth? Is the fourth? That's, I, that. The concert's the second. Yeah, that's, that's wrong, right? Oh, no, the thing said one through the fourth. Put it back up again. Thank you. Put, put it back up. It's saying one through the fourth, right? Right. It's got uh, the first, which is that Saturday, the evening service, then that Sunday, the second, the live concert, and then the third, that Monday, is corporate communion, and then the fourth is Tuesday, the anointing and consecration service. Yeah. Now, 12 days on the planet, 12 days on earth, we're going to use 12 days to cover the 12 months of this year. God is anointing you to do that. And when you hear the fire come out of these dragons of warfare, dragons of warfare. I sound like Derek Prince, right? Yeah, yeah. Dragons of warfare. He said, bring them in. Bring them in. And watch the atmosphere shift and change as they burn things off of. Get your prayer requests in. Uh, those of you that want to get your prayer requests on the altar, the, the prayer requests are going to be laid on the platform so that we can walk around it and amongst it. It'll be anointed with all. We believe in God for that. Send your prayer requests to bishop at uh, uh, prayer at bishopbloomer.com. Everyone get your offering, your seed in your hand. I know we're getting close to Christmas and um, I know that you have uh, expenses and things that you're going to do and need to do. Uh, just don't forget God. And so I'm going to ask you to pay your tithe and slip an extra 20 or 50 inside there and be a blessing to the church so we don't experience any Christmas frost. Okay? Get your tithe and your offering and let's do this to the glory and the honor of God. Thank you so much.
uh, the past week because it came out of the Thanksgiving going into the Christmas. And I'm going to ask those of you that would and that can to do a stocking stuffer. Put something in there for Jesus. After all, this is his time. He's the reason for the season. Okay? So I need 21 of you to sow a seed over and above your tithe and your offering of 100. And I need 21 of you over and above your seed to sow a seed of 50. And then I need the rest of you to do 20. Let's bring the offering up this morning in the name of Jesus. Would you do that for me? Father, I thank you right now in the name of Jesus that your people are responding because the words that I speak are angelic forces that their response will travel to. We send the word and it accomplishes that which we sent it to do. We thank you for it now. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. All right? Last time to give. Get it together. Get it together. Oh, Tonight on the prayer line. Tonight. Oh, I love it. My God, I love it. 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 Christmas giveaway. Thank you all. I, you know, I'd, I'd, I'd have missed everything this morning. Shatabasa. Uh, Wokobo shatabasa. Make sure, y'all catch this, catch this right now, catch this there. Make sure you got somebody around you that can always read the handwriting on the wall. Make sure there is a prophet in your life. Somebody that can read the inscription that is on the wall. Make sure you got someone that can interpret your dream and help you to see tomorrow. And I would love to continue to be him in your life until God says otherwise. 
So I pray a heavy anointing on all of the children of God. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, may the saving grace of the Lord, Savior Jesus Christ, full fellowship of the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, rest, remain, and abide with you now and forevermore. Have a wonderful Sunday. You know whether I'm right or wrong.